back to a new episode. Anyone who's a fan of Mill will probably love this deck. We're going for John Irenicus the Exile. At the beginning of your own step, draw a card if your library has more cards in it than target opponent's library. Otherwise, each opponent mills five cards. Pretty simple ability. Pretty cool to have a mill commander come from the latest set. So to support the mill strategy, we've got some really fun cards like Cut Your Losses, which halves your opponent's library. Round it down. But if you sacrifice a creature, you'll actually be copying this as well, which is really powerful. We've got stuff like Jace, Wilder of Mysteries, which lets you mill somebody for two and draw a card. This is cool because you have a built-in win card as well. If you don't have any cards in your library for some reason, then you'll just win the game instead when you get to the ultimate off. So that's like a nice backup plan. Ashiok, Dream Render, which mills people for four a time, then exiles their opponent's graveyard, which is really useful because a lot of the time I've noticed that Milling someone isn't enough anymore. Graveyard synergies are just way too powerful to leave lying around. So we've got Ashok to get rid of them, and Ashok stops them tutoring. That's another reason they've got Soul God Lantern to exile graveyards. We also have Leylon of the Void to stop them reanimating stuff from the graveyard too, because there's a lot of Moldrotha decks out there, so you have to be really careful. Sword of Body Mind is the only sword in the format, but if you equip this to a creature, whenever they deal damage, you're going to mill them for 10, which is super relevant, and it gives you a 2-2 which can um, also block and then itself equip to the sword later on, which is really useful. And you've got the classic classics like Ruin Crab, which is just a nightmare card if people can't deal with early. It's going to single-handedly win games, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, if you want to see the deck list, it will be in the description below. Don't forget to hit that like button. And if you could, subscribe to the channel because it really helps. And I've noticed the um, majority of people aren't actually subbed. So it would be you know, nice to boost the channel up. And uh, yeah, let's get into the video. Okay, Mirim. So that seems to be the most popular deck at the minute. Um, starting hand seems okay. It's got a few mill elements, so like to keep it. Miriam, I'm sure you've seen it by now. It's the most popular commander, I think, to come out of the uh, the latest set. Play a dragon, you get a dragon. I do think it's pretty busted, especially having War 2. Feels unnecessary for a card that lets you copy legends. <laughs> like, War 2 is a dangerous mechanic now because it feels like it doesn't have any flavour reasons to be on things. They just seem to tack it onto anything they want. And at any time, it just makes the game hell. Like, even Ward 1 I'm finding quite annoying as well. Because essentially, Ward 1 says you're playing spells one turn behind curve. So you can imagine Ward 2 says you're playing spells two turns behind curve, if it's removal, right? So, unless you use sacrifice abilities, this is just very difficult to deal with. I do wonder if Wizards actually thinks about any of the things they make. Like the implications. There was a time many years ago when they said, we aren't going to put in Hexproof... Sorry, firstly they said, we're not going to make Shroud. Because Shroud means that no one can interact with the creature. So then they invented Hexproof. Which says your opponent can't interact with the creature. Which is even stronger. And then they said, oh, maybe that's just gone too far. And then over the years they pushed and pulled with Hexproof saying... Oh, should we, shouldn't we? They made a few here and there. And now they've settled on Ward. But the thing about Ward is, it's the same argument I make when we talk about e-cigarettes. This is a weird tangent, but think about this for a second. When cigarettes were legal indoors, people would be considerate and go outside to smoke. And it wouldn't really bother you. And as a non-smoker, I really appreciate that. Now they've made e-cigarettes, people smoke indoors and they blow it in your face. It's the same mentality with Ward. You can put Ward on anything you want, and according to Wizards, it doesn't really impact anything. You see where I'm getting at? So, in the past, this would have had Hexproof, which would have been obviously broken as hell. But now they're just tacking Ward on, it's just like, oh, go on then. And it, there's no flavour reason for this. Unless you play D&D, &D, there might be, but... See, now... We're basically going to spend our entire turn taking this out with the grasp but we should be able to back it up with two other things 
the way it is, unfortunately. But we have to kill it or we just basically lose the game because there's probably a many, many number of combos they, they can use to kill us with. So we draw and then mill two, which is a nice way of perpetuating the synergy here. Drawing, milling, go around in circles. Five, six, seven. So what are they going to do now? I mean, if we get desperate, we can always go for the wins to balance something. Seems like the audio's just gone off, which is wonderful. Shivan Dragon and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, so we, we do actually have some answers here. Which is good. Let's see if we can take him out with just milling. So yeah, do apologise for the audio. I don't really want to replace the audio with uh, music because, uh, as you may know, YouTube's a bit funny with the old licensing. So this guy can make dragons. So we want to, we do want to swing at him. Shivan Dragon. I guess we'll go for the Ashiok. Start milling and exiling a bit more. And then yeah, we can pass a turn here. Start milling them again. So they're down to 63. You know, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a journey. But I never said this deck was gonna be easy. So keep that in mind. Three, four, five, six, seven. So if they play one mana, they can go for the Mirim. Orb of Dragonkind. Whoa, and it gives it hexproof as well. For one turn. That's kind of crazy. Might have to bounce this. Shivan Dragon gets hexproof. Hmm. Yeah, let's draw a card here. Okay, this Jade Orb seems pretty crazy, to be honest. How are we going to deal with these guys? Even hexproof for one turn is absurd. So every turn they can basically get a Shiv and Dragon until we deal with this. Jeez. I'm really not sure how to deal with these things. It feels it feels bad, right? Because the contempt is now not going to be able to deal with their general. So well, I just guess we'll do a Sarkin then, because it's just gonna give them dragons every single turn. Yeah, and we can't we can't even touch the Shivan Dragon, so Which is embarrassing because this card's not even that good. I don't really want to get rid of it, but it's just a six six flyer, which is, you know it's, it's annoying. I mean we can target it now, but they're gonna get a they're gonna get Mirim here. Kiki Jiki can create tokens that's copy of another non legendary creature. That's interesting. So Miriam makes copies of dragons, except the token isn't legendary. What? So if they make a token with Miriam, they can make a token with Kiki Jiki. So they have three of the same legends on the field. This is going to be very difficult to deal with. Not going to lie. So let's waste their turn, I guess, bouncing this to their hand. <clears throat> we desperately need an answer. Lands. We just keep getting lands. Yeah, I, I don't think we can win this one, sadly enough. Um, How much is this to activate? That's six. I guess we can make this. We've got literally nothing else to do. If they block, they block. 
So in their turn, they're going to get a Shivan Dragon times two. I think we just lose the game at that point, right? Down to 39. Cacophony. Mm, that's interesting. They can return that to the hand. Um, so they're at 36. Cacophony will take them to 18. That's still too slow. So they'll swing at us for 7. I mean, they might go for Ashiok. Oh, Terra. Okay, that's just game over then. They get a copy of Terra. So that'll be... Enough damage to kill John if they want anything. Going for the Ashiok. Sure. And, uh... So, the Kikijiki made a copy of the Terror, okay. And we get another dragon, so that's another 12 damage or something. Yeah? 12 damage to the face. So, bear in mind, this is... Uh, they started the turn with just a mirror many reflections of Kikijiki. And they ended with three Tower of the Peaks. Totally fair, totally fair. Okay, opponent goes first with Chilane. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure what to say about that. Yeah, we'll keep this. We've got some removal. Yeah, it does take the piss when the opponent has a like a tier one general, and then they get to go first as well, which is, seems just super common here. <laughs> The difference between going first and second is enormous. If you go first, it means that your spells probably escape getting countered. Yeah, past turn. We've got some really nice controlly cards though, so maybe we can keep them off. I'd like to. I'd like to kill Garla Greetus, really, but... Yeah, I think I will. It's just the value this gives him is way too much, especially with a deck that focuses on ETBs. Yeah, so some games you have, you will just shift your gears entirely. We are a mill deck, but I guess we can shift into a control build, depending on the situation. Because like decks like this, which relies on value, you have to stop every everything. Yeah, we're gonna mill that as well. We'll count that because otherwise they just get all the cards back. Wowzers, ancient silver dragon. That would be difficult to deal with. Um, oops, I accidentally played tap band. Okay, that's fine. We'll skip for the Illuminator, and then maybe we can start casting stuff from top of our deck. Do you have a land on top? Um, get rid of the creature. So now we can cast creatures on the top of our deck once per turn. Yeah, so Cemetery Illuminator with the John is actually quite cool because. John has a clause, basically, that... So if your opponent has more cards in their graveyard than you, you draw a card. But if you keep changing that value, then you'll mill them. Because it's an otherwise clause, so it's interesting, like, push and pull. Do you want to draw a card or do you want to mill them, essentially? So if you can turn the sway... Now, Circle of Dreams, Druid adds... Tr Three green. They've already got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What? How much more mana do they want? Let's swing in first. Get rid of the artifact. So we have a Jace on top. So if we go for the Mind Stone, then we can go for the John as well. Yeah, this is this is kind of like a take the turn, the turn off, turn to just establish more things. But I am scared of this. Four, five, ancient gold dragon. Wow. So if this hits us, they get D twenty fairies. So unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to exile this. It's pretty cool though. So it looks like they've made an ancient dragon build.
and swing in. Get rid of the instant damn. It feels like every time we exile something from their grave, we just get a different type on top. Does this mean they have a board wipe on top? I do wonder. Feed the swarm? That That's going to be useful if they go for Chile never, but... So I feel like, is this just a dragon build? Seems that way. Okay, so Ward 4. That's going to be really difficult to deal with. But feed the swarm... Okay, actually, feed the swarm's fine. So we're going to have to do this because Imrith is just insane. Because it can draw them up to three cards a turn. I mean, we're lucky here being able to take care of the current threats, but eventually these Dragon Swords are going to just draw them so many cards and it's going to be very difficult to deal with. Ah, uh, okay, so they've just, they just got a visitor of many faces in the graveyard, so that's... That's scary. Kura, okay. And I guess they can also copy that with Vizio, which is going to make this very, very difficult. Oh, they go for Chilean instead. That's interesting. So they went for Chilean before the Kura, okay. Um, so yeah, we're going to have to get rid of the Chilean here. And then, I guess, go for the J's to draw a card. Yeah, I didn't, didn't anticipate them having uh, flashback cards, basically, which is kind of sad. And we can't get through the Kura, so there's no point attacking. We'll just hold back. They could just get another Kura, then it will die. Ancient Bronze Dragon, so this one... When it hits somebody, put D20 counters on up to two creatures. This is crazy, man. They've just drawn all the all the ancient dragons. That's crazy. So that's one, two, three. So they've got 72 cards left in the deck, but they've drawn three of their ancient dragons. Okay. It's kind of crazy. It's a matter of giving. Drown in the lock. Now this is good. This can kill the... So yeah, this can kill the dragon. So I'm going to do that now. Man, we can't let them have any of these dragons. If, if any of them hit us, we are just so screwed. So we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we can go for Drown Secrets. And then next turn we can go for Garuda. But for now we'll just go for the Patient Rebuilding. And pass the turn. So, Garuda is actually really cool when we can see what's on top of our deck because it can help us decide. I mean, Crater Hoof Behemoth, of course. Oh my goodness. That's that game, isn't it? <laughs> uh... Okay, we get first against Angrath, which will probably be a discard theme deck, although it could also be just a steel type deck. I've seen that before, so they could steal our things and then sacrifice them for their own benefit. Our starting hand is actually pretty decent. Ooh, two of would be good. Now we do have a creature in the hand. Uh, unfortunately, this will probably get stolen by Angrath, and we will lose it. But not much we can really do about that, unless we find a way to give it hexproof. But yeah, Graveyard Trespass is great because it's not a mill card, but when it enters the battlefield or attacks, you're exiling cards from the graveyard, and it's really useful, as I said in the intro, to keep your opponent off useful things in the graveyard because I've noticed a huge it like insurgents of 
just graveyard synergies. Which makes sense as time goes on, formats get stronger. Oh boy, so they're going to make us discard a card. I guess we'll get rid of the Dread Hound. And I don't want to discard anything else. Which means they get a card in their hand, which is kind of sad. Let's go for the Graveyard Trespasser here. <clears throat> Exiling that from the Graveyard. Yeah, I think this card is way too powerful. Discarding up to two cards for two mana is just unprecedented. And it gives them one back as well. I don't even care if it says random, it's just OP. <clears throat> Pardon me. Ominous Traveller gives them a random card as well. A lot of random stuff going on. So they've got nothing in the graveyard. So this might be a good time to go for the Cosmos Elixir when they're tapped out anyway. And yeah, we'll swing in. Yeah, I don't really want to exile our own stuff, sadly. So eventually we're going to have to be able to try and deal with the Angrath, but that will require having either the, either the removal or another creature out, because he can just kill the Graveyard Trespasser by stealing it and sacking it. Psychic Corrosion. So they've stolen a mill card from our deck, which means that it was pretty ineffective, luckily. So I think we'll go for John here. Now, the Trespasser is actually a non-bow with the John in some ways, but at least John actually put stuff into their graveyard. So, it's, it only takes out one a turn. And John puts in five, so... Oh, blimey. Some good, really good hits with that mill. <laughs> I'm happy to not see any of these on the battlefield. When you get Maddening Cacophony, it's a good idea to save it for its kick cost, because if you're just going to do a mill of eight, it's not that effective. So we make them discard a card here. Okay, so we're going to want a way to deal with the Glory Bringer. Sadly, the Jukebog is also number with John, <laughs> but <laughs> that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. I mean, at least you're milling them. Let's go the Tutelage here. Infernal Grasp. Now that is useful. We'll go to the Ley Line because we already have the Bajuka Bog. So then, yeah, we might as well Bajuka Bog here because we, we want to hit the land drops. And then we, we're going to mill them for more anyway, so. Ooh, Dread in the Lock. Although that doesn't work either. <laughs> Slightly embarrassing. I mean, maybe I went over the top with the Exile effects, but. I just, I just really get triggered when I see something like Moldrotha. It's just way too risky. Just look at these cards that now don't have access to those. Wonderful. So we can't count Angrath. They can make us discard a card. Ever seen water burn? Yeah. You will. So let's just kill the glory bringer here. No fire, no steel. And then in our turn, we can just get rid of the Dragon the Lock. Uh, well, we can use it on the Ominous Traveller. We can swing in Angrath. We'll see what we get. But yeah, Exile in the Graveyard? Mm, interesting. Maybe you don't have too many abilities like this. Oh, well, that's a shame. So we lose our General. Spell Pierce. Yeah, I guess we'll just go for John again. So, I think... Ooh, patient rebuilding. That's something we want to keep. Oh, no, but they mill us, don't they? Oh, my goodness. That's a layer of complexity that's been added to the game. <laughs> no fire, no steel. Um... I guess we'll get rid of the spell pierce because they've got so much mana now, probably not that effective anyway. And in this turn, Predator. Okay. So currently they. Right, so now they get another creature, so they can just steal our John and then sacrifice it to the Predator. If. Oh, I see. So gain control of creature with mana value less than or number of. Oh, okay, cool. They couldn't have stolen it. That's good. See, now I'm not sure what to do. 
Because if we use Dran Unlock, they're just going to sacrifice this to the guy. I guess it taps it, right? That's the main thing. It taps the Predator, so we can swing in Angrath, take him down a bit. Or will they choose to... See, this is the thing. If they didn't do that, they could have blocked, but yeah. I guess they wanted to make this larger. Okay, so we're going to give him Maze Mind Toad. And swing in at Angrath. So he will make us discard another card. So it might be a good idea to not play the Ice Tunnel. We can always we can always draw first, see what we get. Ooh, scriptures. Scriptures probably isn't that good, so I'm happy to discard that. I just really want to make my land drops each turn. Yeah, and being able to draw here is really good against Angrath because it yeah, we'll leave that on top. Don't care if that gets milled. Leaving stuff on top for that. Um but yeah, draw, drawing cards against Angrath is fantastic because you're kind of Nullifying no him. This Cosmos Elixir no basically stick. nullifies all of Angrath's abilities. Well, plus one anyway. See, now I'm tempted to keep the Scriptures. Because if they play another creature, then the Scriptures might be able to deal with that as well. Chandra. Yikes. Get out of my way. I'm burning up here. 65, yeah, this is gonna be a losing battle. Glad I can help with your not being on fire. Chandra power. and Angrath is gonna be pretty rough to deal with, not gonna lie. And then now the Predator. So they're hitting us at four angles. They're hitting us at combat damage, mill, non-combat damage and discard, along with non-combat damage on there as well. Yeah, pretty rough. Okay, let's pass the turn. I'm not sure how much of a chance we have, but... Mindstone, don't mind getting that milled. Oh man, we need some kind of removal ASAP. Because they're if they hit removal every turn, then they deal with our commander every turn. Now we have an emblem to deal with. Let's get toast. And Predator gets larger every turn. Lantern? Come on, just no creature. Give us one turn and off. Okay, so they get done with the bugbear, they're going to hit us for 8, 9, 10, 11 maybe, or they're going to steal this as well. That's interesting. So they're going for like freedom. <laughs> the PS de resistance here. Let's scry because we're desperate now. Corrosion. Mm, too slow. So 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yikes. Yeah, they've got pretty lucky this game. I mean, our cards, all the cards we drew don't really interact with them, but I think that's just the nature of Mill. Like, Mill sort of ignores your Prince Field to some extent, but... So essentially they've set up this turn. Oh yeah, then they can just do that. Yeah, so we lose our general again. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think there's any way we can win this. Sadly enough. Belfall's mastery gets rid of the Predator, I suppose. But they're just going to use the Angrath to minus two. I guess we have to get rid of the Predator, because that's the highest damage that they're going to deal. Yeah, steal and sack is pretty mean. Can't lie about that. So, sadly enough, we just die to so many things. Angrath's ability, Chandra's ability. Not having a way to kill the Angrath for so many turns was devastating as well. What what has he done there? Five? Ten damage, perhaps? No fire, no steel. Chandra killed our general. Chandra's optic twice. <laughs> No pressure. <laughs> so we... Okay, so if they cast any spell here, we just uh, die to the Professor Onyx, essentially. Hmm? Sorry. Haven't heard that name yeah. 
Steal and sack. Oof, that's a rough matchup, that is. Okay, fair enough. Moving on to the next game. I think it's first with Raga Draga, Gorgot's boss. Manadork Lord. So the deck will probably have just loads of mana dorks and uh, yeah, this boosts all their power. Let's them attack and then untap, so it gives them vigilance essentially. Our starting end seems okay, but who knows, maybe they'll just go for Creator of Behemoth and uh, <laughs> win out of nowhere. Which is just basically the game. The, game's, um, the game should be called Arena, Creator of Behemoth, essentially. So we could go for the scriptures next turn, which would be kind of nice to sort sort their ramp out if they go for another creature. Guardian project. Okay. Hmm, this is gonna draw them so many cards, isn't it? Well, I guess we'll get the John Erenicus out. I mean this is the, this is the sad thing about this guy. He's really powerful, but Maybe he's just too weak for the ball, I'm not really sure. I've not seen anyone use it. That seems to be a trope with my channel. Using the generals no one else uses, which is fine with me, I suppose, because it means that it's different content. But yeah, all I just, just keeps in the same decks over and over again. When a new set comes out, it's almost like those creatures are so powerful that every set before it is just considered too weak. So the power creep is crazy. Um, we'll get the Bejewel Book out of the way now because it comes in tap, unfortunately. So we will mill them for five more. Oh, that's interesting. So neither player has... If... So draw a card if your library has more cards in it than target opponent's library. Oh, I see. Right, it doesn't care about the... That's interesting. Are they going to destroy this? They are. Okay. Yeah, this Ragged Rag is crazy. Each creature with a mana ability gets plus two, plus two. Yeah. So we're going to want to kill something somehow, but I'm not sure at this point how. Oof, Sword of Body and Mind. That's a great way to block. The Cemetery Desecrator. Minus four. Yeah, that works actually, doesn't it? So we can go for our scriptures and exile the Ragga Dragga. So that buys us a little bit of time. Yeah, the, the Desecrate is really good in this deck because obviously both players will have graveyards and... Um, oh, wonderful, Snakeskin Veil. Okay. <laughs> they can't really do much then against these guys. They've got the answer for every single eventuality. Right. So, recording today, this is the um, this is the third time that Creator Hoof has actually killed me. So, even if I block here, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm dead. Or am I just one off? So, I'm down to three. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. So... There's nothing I can really do. Uh, the Elspeth Nightmare doesn't kill anything. Chase doesn't do anything. Illuminator doesn't do anything. I can kill one thing, but that would mean that I only have one blocker still. Fine, I guess we can see what's on top of our deck. It's a Planeswalker, so it doesn't really make a difference. Wonderful. So, as usual, we just uh, lose to a crater hoof, which I prophesized at the beginning of this video. And uh, yeah, it's becoming a bit of a joke at this point. <laughs> Absolute joke. Uh... Yeah, this deck is just absolute. Let me let me guess. This this is the LVD build. 
pretty sure this is the LVD build because it's really tight and concise. Cabaretti Rebels as well. Yeah, this is the thing about like huge, huge YouTubers will make these decks, um, obviously to get popular videos, but then once everyone sees them, everyone makes them, and then the format just becomes saturated with the same decks. So, uh, what's this? None of them got Trample, but it doesn't matter how many are block. Uh, we still take eight. So there you go. I guess thanks to the large YouTubers for making a hellscape for the rest of us. Jesus. Don't forget to check out more of my videos and also my Kofi donations page. You can donate as little or as much as you want.